In 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 to 15, it reads, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. The purpose for this message today is not a political one. The purpose for this message today is not one that is anti-religion. The purpose for this message today is as a result of hearing in America how the American nation led by its new president Donald Trump is speaking prayer over its people. President Trump speaks of faith. President Trump has reminded his people that in the American Constitution that God is part of the American way. This faith that Donald Trump is bringing back to America is something that I would like to see happen here in Australia. Recently we have our new Prime Minister Scott Morrison who is a Christian man and for that I am extremely grateful. What we need however is a society which is less worried about political correctness. The problem that we have is that in our constitution we don't specify that we are a Christian country. We specify that people have a freedom to worship any religion of their choosing. This in itself may seem like an issue, but it actually isn't. The issue that we have here in Australia is that we have a growing population of people who no longer seek God whatsoever. The last census that was taken in 2016 tells us clearly that now 30% of our population no longer seek God, no longer believe in our Creator. They are purely living of themselves in this world how they are today. We have quite a serious issue as this is not a static figure, this is actually a rapidly growing figure. The census results in Australia across 115 years show a decline in people who are followers of Jesus by almost half. This is quite extraordinary. For me at my age, in my early 50s, this indicates that before I'm likely to go to the Lord, that less than half of those people are likely to seek the Lord. So we have quite a serious problem. If you were a follower of Jesus, the purpose for this message today is actually a call to prayer. We have a significant problem here in Australia. We are known as the Great Southern Land. We are also known as a place from which there is a prophecy over this land that a great revival will occur from here. However, as we know with prophecies from the Bible, it actually requires faith and action to bring them to pass. So I want to challenge you today. Are you part of the story? Is this something that concerns you? Is this something that tears at your heart? Do you spend time evangelizing other people? Do we make it part of our day to go out of our way to show the Lord to other people? Do we exhibit in our character and in our attributes the fruits of the Spirit? Are we a group of people as Christians, as followers of Jesus, that others would want to aspire to? Now, this is a daily challenge for us. As the founder of the Jesus Movement, I'm seeing a rapid growth of people who are hungry for the word of the Lord around the world. 
At this point in time, I have in excess of 45 countries, and many of those countries are quite poor. But because they're poor, they no longer seek to serve themselves as they don't have the means to. But boy oh boy, do they look to serve the Lord, because they realise that there's nothing that they can do here on earth which will probably change their situation in any significant way. It's funny, isn't it, how the poorer we are, normally the closer we are to God. The scripture in the Bible tells us that if we find ourselves in a situation where we have to choose between God and money, that there's a great risk to ourselves that we won't actually make it. That the draw of money in our lives is so powerful in the here and the now that it precludes us from actually seeking the Lord. I'd just like to challenge each and every person today, if you are listening to this message, to think about that if you are proud of your country, I am an Australian, I was born here, my parents are from Scotland and England. You know, I love my parents and I love my heritage, however, I love my country and being born here in Australia and being proud of being an Australian, this is something which is extremely important to me because it impacts on my life, on my lifestyle, on the values. It's going to impact my children in the future and my children's children. So this is something which is significantly important for me and it should be for each and every other person who's listening. If you're from another nation, this same expression of seeking the Lord should be equally as important. No matter where we come from, Jesus told us to go out to the four corners of the earth. He said to go out and to share the gospel to all people. The Jesus movement its purpose is to do just that. It's to teach the word of the Lord to anyone, any place, and any time. However, it's also important that we do the, this in our own lives, with our own families, with our friends, with our government, in our workplace, with our with our. Uh, you know, relations and mates and all those sort of people with all the different terms that we use them for. So what I would like you to do, if you can hear my heart today, is I would like us to believe exactly what that phrase says when we say, God bless Australia. For God to bless Australia, that means that he will walk with us no matter what the struggle is. He will walk with us despite what our faith is and what it does. The thing is though is as people is that we need to walk with the Lord and in order for us to do that we need to call on the Lord. When we call on the Lord we're talking about prayer. We're asking God to prepare our way we're asking God that when we speak to other people or if we have a influence, a godly influence in the lives of others, in public opinion, in government decisions, that each and every one of us represent our Heavenly Father, but that He also will touch each of those people. He will open the pathway in order to make a difference. Now, I don't know about you, but for me at this point in time, uh, this has become an extremely important issue. We all know that we're living in a society which is changing rapidly. One of the rapid changes is obviously through social media and the electronic age that we live in. It is absolutely racing along and as people, we're almost hanging on for dear life, like a jockey sitting on top of a horse thundering down a racetrack. It's much more powerful and much bigger than we are, and yet we're still able to hold the reins, guide the horse, and to run the race well. 
So if that's important to you, let's join together and let's begin to pray. Let's call on the Lord and ask him to prepare the path in this great southern land for people to once again to seek him first. Statistically, we're losing this battle. Statistically, as a wealthy country, people are actually no longer seeking God whatsoever. We obviously have people coming from other countries through immigration who walk with different faith. But they're not atheists. And the situation that we have in our country, where we often focus on other religions and what that means for us here, the reality is, is that we have a much bigger problem, and that's atheism. That is people who no longer believe in God whatsoever. People who don't see any need to believe in God. It's a very sad situation. And I just pray that this message today has challenged you a little bit, has made you think a little bit about what life's about. Perhaps it's made you reflect on your own journey and whether you feel that you're being productive for Jesus. Also, I'm also asking, as I've mentioned over and over, I'm asking people to pray. I want you to join me and to join others, people around this nation, to simply pray. We need to pray. So if this touches your heart, please consider what I've had to say today. Take some time with the Lord and let's just come together as a people, as followers of Jesus, as a nation, and let's make our nation great again. There's many politicians using this like a catchphrase, but they're not walking with the Lord. But let us, let us the people, make our nation great again. Let us put God first in all things that we do. Let us glorify Him in all things that we do. Let our purpose for doing all things be to please our Heavenly Father. Let us accept that Jesus died on the cross so that our battles are already won. Let us accept that when our battles are already won, that we have God on our side. We have a platform from which we can go out and we can help others. So thank you for listening to me today. I pray that this message has stirred you up. I pray you can hear the sincerity with which I speak. And I just pray that taking that time with the Lord, taking some time for prayer, and actively walking in your faith, in your family, amongst your friends, and in your community, and in your workplace. I would just love if each and every person could be reinvigorated and make sure that part of our daily walk in life is not just for us, but is for Jesus. Thank you for listening to this message. God bless you. This is Paul.